So this is our revision uh, lesson, our revision session on Herodotus. And Herodotus is the main source, by a long way, the main source for the war between the Greeks and the Persians that we've been studying. So we're going to study the man in his life, assess his reliability as a historian, to develop historiographical skills, the study of history, the subject of history is called historiography. Bias, you know that means. Philo Hellenist, philo barbarian, two things Herodotus is accused of by various people. If you're a philo Hellenist, you love the Greeks, you're biased towards them. If you're a philo barbarian, you love the barbarians, you're biased towards them. The mere fact that he is accused of both, to a lot of people, means actually he was quite even handed. Religion. The role he thinks religion plays in all this. Underlying causes. Herodotus is bad at this sort of thing. So let's, let's have a think about the guy first. He's born in 484 BC. So at the time of the second big Persian invasion of Greece, you know, the um, Thermopylae, Salonis, Plataea, he's six or seven years of age. So he yeah, definitely takes no part in it. He's from Helicarnassus, which is a city in. in uh, part of, well, it's Greek speaking in Western Turkey. It's Caria, not Ionia, but it's near, near Ionia. So he's not Greek Greek. He writes the, the books called the histories, it means inquiry. He's the first person to use the word. And he writes them over a series of years between 450 and 420 BC. So he writes them 30 years after the event. He writes most of them while he's living in Athens. He's exiled from Heliconassus, and he writes them whilst he's living in Athens. And some of them he writes it during Athens' big war with Sparta, the Peloponnesian War. So something I think you might remember, and I think it's worth noting in an exam if it comes up. When we're talking about bias with Rodotus, is he pro-Greek, is he pro-Barbarian, pro-Persian? Yeah, there's things on both sides. But he's definitely pro Athens. He's definitely, there's a lot of sucking up to the Athenians. On the plus side, though, he is widely travelled, we think. He's travelled through a lot of places in the Persian Empire. He's spoken to Persians, he may have seen official Persian records, as well as travelling through Greece. Now, that's a bias. He obviously is biased to some extent. The guy is a Greek speaker, he lives in Athens, he's definitely pro Greek. A bigger um, criticism of Hodgkin's by historians is that you know, he, this guy writes the first ever history book and he makes what well, to many people is a basic mistake. He writes a lot about individuals and what individuals have done to influence history. And so he blames the Ionian revolt on the actions of Aristagoras, the tyrant of Miletus. He doesn't go for larger factors, strategy, the economy. He doesn't say the Ionians were struggling. Uh, to pay the taxes of the Persians. He didn't mention that sort of stuff. He talks about this blog did this, that blog did that. And he tends to write stories not strictly history. Some of the things he writes in his book are plainly not true. You know, there's spiders who hunt camels and that sort of business. Now, there's a good point about him, bad points about him. Watch this bit of the video again if you need to. Memorize them. Well, let's have a quick look at some of the passages. So pause it now and read all this. Pause it now and read this passage. Okay, so this is from the Battle of Thermopylae. The Spartan Dionikes. He's a guy who comes up with the good, we'll fight our battle in the shade. Yeah. This is a laconic term, isn't it? Laconic wit. And two, if all the Spartans are killed, how does Herodotus know that this happened? Well, there are many possible answers here. If you remember, it's not just the Spartans at Thermopylae. There are Thespians who all died, and Thebans, some of whom may have survived. Maybe they told him. Um, this occurs before the battle. A man from Trachis, it says. Maybe this guy tells everybody about it afterwards. You've got to think these things through. Another very famous passage 
regarding Xerxes' uh, journey with this huge army and navy to Greece. Going through Lydia, a guy called Pythias is very rich and powerful, helps him. Read this, this. Stop. Pause it now. Read it. Tell me what you think. So if you see it here, Pythias asks him, don't take all my sons. Xerxes is furious at that and has his eldest son cut in half and his body placed on either side of the road. No judge, no jury, no trial. Kill him. Yeah. So what does Herodotus want us to think about Xerxes? He's a tyrant. The people in his army are his slaves. You know, they're not free citizens. They can't do what they want. And then you've got another passage about a bridge of boats across the Hellespont. And the, the Persians built two of them. And the first one got destroyed by a storm. The engineers are executed. And Xerxes has the water whipped. He has the water, the water has a pair of fetters, handcuffs, if you like, going to it, and branded. And the important thing about this to Herodotus, it tells us a lot about Xerxes. He believes he's a servant of Ahura Mazda, the god. But to, for, the, for, the, for the storm to destroy his bridges is a sin. And this is what Herodotus refers to as hubris, overwhelming arrogance. And the punishment for hubris is nemesis, certain destruction. Again, look all this up. Think about it.